interests. At home and abroad, the National Guard serves with courage, discipline, skill, and distinction. I'm proud to be their chairman, the chairman of our total joint force, active and reserves, civilian and families, and I take seriously my responsibility to give voice to their achievements and to their needs. I ensure their voice, including the voice of the Chief of the National Guard Bureau, is heard. This said, I joined the Secretary of Defense and the Service Chiefs in counseling against making the Chief of the National Guard a statutory member of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. I am concerned about the pending National Guard Empowerment Act legislation regarding full membership of the Chief of the National Guard Bureau on the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The spirit of jointness kindled by the Goldwater-Nichols reform legislation is truly alive and has served our nation well and reflects the wisdom of the Congress. I do not believe it needs to be fixed, and we don't need to take a step back. But backward. with all due respect to the Chief of the National Guard Bureau, my good friend Greg McKinley, with whom I have had the utmost respect for and have worked closely with on a num numerous critical issues, I am bound to communicate my explicit opposition to this post as a member of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. First, representing only two of the six reserve components, the Army National Guard and the Air National Guard, at the Joint Chiefs of Staff level will create confusion, imbalance, and potentially challenge interoperability. However, in, in my opinion, making the Chief of the National Guard Bureau a member of the Joint Chiefs of Staff adds unnecessary complexity to the principle of unity of command. Unlike the service chiefs, the Chief of the National Guard Bureau does not represent a branch of service, nor is he responsible for organizing, manning, training and equipping the National Guard to the extent of the service chiefs and their respective services. In my view, there should be no change to the status quo. Let me first acknowledge my colleague, uh, General Craig McKinley, the current chief of the National Guard Bureau, and the many men and women who have faithfully served in our state's National Guard units. They have served our nation uh, and their states well for many decades. For this and much more, we owe them our great debt of gratitude. By virtue of his limited role in the Department of Defense and his supporting role in Army and Air Force Affairs, the Chief of the National Guard Bureau lacks the requisite broad insight into all levels of strategic planning for JCS membership. Additionally, the Chief of the National Guard Bureau's dual mission and state focus creates an unavoidable conflict of interest inconsistent with voting membership. Making him or her a statutory member of the Joint Chiefs would reach beyond the appropriate role for the Bureau Chief. And because the Bureau Chief's advisory role to the service secretaries and chiefs is for all National Guard matters, including notably those that are related to the Federal Service of the National Guard, providing statutory Joint Chiefs membership to the National Guard Bureau Chief would disrupt the lines of authority and representation that are already in place for the Chiefs of the Army and the Air Force. 